Hi everybody, I'm Scott, and this video is going to be about Japan Crate. Now, after my Creation Crate video, a few people asked me about this because I mentioned it briefly when I was talking about all the different kinds of crates you could get nowadays. And this is a subscription service where they send a box of Japanese snacks and other candy straight to your door every month. And I don't mean they send it from Japan, it's a company in California that presumably buys all this stuff in bulk from Japan and then ships it out to you. And most of this stuff is either hard to get or expensive to get in the US. So these crates really aren't a bad deal, I'll get more into that later. This was a gift from my wife, and I know what you're saying, he's going to have to give this a good review because his wife bought it for him, blah blah blah. But that's not the case because I just wouldn't bother making a video at all if I didn't actually like this, which is why I want to talk about it. And this was a great choice on her part because although I'm not a huge Japanophile, I do have a great love of Japanese food and culture. I grew up in Port Washington, which is a moderately sized suburb just east of Queens, New York. And I was lucky to have not one, not two, but three authentic Japanese markets in that town. And they sold everything from staples, uh, raw ingredients, rice, seafood, that sort of stuff, to prepared foods like sushi and Japanese candy of all sorts. And the best part is that the market nearest to me sold pre-made sushi. And I don't mean that pre-made crap that's trucked into a supermarket or a gas station. I mean the owner of the store actually made it fresh in the back on a regular basis and put it out while his wife ran the register. And so I spent a lot of my allowance money on sushi and afterwards for dessert, Japanese candy. So these Japan crates aren't just about me exploring all sorts of Japanese snacks, but it's actually a big nostalgia trip and really takes me back to those days. Now this video is not going to be a comprehensive taste test of everything in this box. I mean, first of all, what you're going to get in your box if you order this is completely different than what's in here now because they do a pretty good job of switching everything up. And the other reason is, I mean, your tastes differ from mine. You know, even if I really like something, you might hate it and vice versa. So I am going to try a few things, especially some of the more esoteric items, just to give you an idea what they taste like and what you're in for. But first, let's see what's in the actual crate. Now first of all it comes in this nice red box, which I enjoy because it looks really nice sitting on my front porch and you know, I know what it is and it's uh, exciting to receive it. And here's what's inside. Oh, every crate comes with a booklet and I'll get into that in a little more detail. And of course all the various snacks. And I don't know any Japanese at all and I'm not even familiar with a lot of this stuff because even if I did eat it in my childhood I don't remember it. So for example. I don't know what this is. It looks like some kind of corn or rice puff treat, but the booklet's going to tell me what it's all about. So we got this thing, we got this, these things. This looks like it's beef flavored. We got these. One of these. Now, each kit includes a DIY candy, which means sort of like a candy you play with and you make something out of. So I'm assuming that's what this is because there's a pair of scissors there and I guess you either extrude or place some crap on top of this head and then you can style the hair the way you want it. Every crate also includes some kind of uh, physical surprise, something non-edible. For example, one crate had this little guy. Uh, I don't know what he's called. Maybe he's popular in Japan, maybe he's not. I have no idea. And another crate had this... Uh, this cat in a teacup inside a plastic egg. Not sure what that's about, but uh, there you go. Um, ah, some interesting flavored Kit Kats. My friend got a bunch of uh, Japanese Kit Kats and all sorts of weird flavors. I think they're pretty cool. I like these a lot. Oh, I think I've had something like this before. I think I had this in strawberry. Yep, looks like the same thing. Okay, they do repeat sometimes, I guess. Uh, we got one of these, which is beer flavored or root beer flavored dinosaur thing. Oh yeah, I didn't even open this physical thing. This is some kind of Legend of Zelda badge. Why would they... I don't really know what the deal is with this. Like, is this my pass to something or am I supposed to put like a trading card in there and then display it proudly? I'm not sure what this is all about, but it has uh, some kind of Legend of Zelda branding on it. Not really my uh, thing, but there you go. Um, ooh, this is weird. This has a weird texture to it. That's another thing. A lot of these will have weird textures, which uh, this is sort of gummy. And these are 
hard candy balls. I wonder if these are sour candies. I used to love, uh, they had sour candies back in the day. Something with uh, an astronaut on it. Condensed milk matcha candy. Now that's an unusual one. Matcha is uh, toasted brown rice and with condensed milk, it looks like it comes out of the inside. If that's the case though, what is the outside flavored like? This, this will require some exploration. These look like they're probably chocolate. We'll find out. And this version of the Japan Crate includes a drink every time. This is sangria flavored. And most of these drinks are just uh, by majority high fructose corn syrup. Uh, this has that apple juice, citric acid, and flavor. So, and previously, I haven't even opened this yet. In the previous crate, uh, I got this can also that says sangria. It uh, appears to be grape flavored though. So I guess we'll check that out too. For a good time, try sangria. Is that what he says? I don't know. It comes with this nice lining. I don't know why I like that. It's a nice touch. Okay, so let me just quickly check out some of this more interesting stuff. Like I said, not going to taste test everything, but uh, condensed milk with matcha sounds very intriguing. Well, I like it. I can't really describe the flavor too well if you don't know what matcha tastes like. It tastes kind of like that. And condensed milk uh, isn't really a strong flavor. Now I'm kind of interested in these, uh, it's corn, corn potage. Yeah, little puffs. Okay, these are really good. I like these a lot. Very strong corn flavor. Like you see, you see corn, you think it's just corn chips, you know, it's sort of made of corn but this actually is flavored strongly like cream corn. Okay, now this one looks like it might be more sweet, so. Looks like pumpernickel. It's uh, not quite spongy, but. Okay, well, it's cocoa flavored. It's pretty good. See, I could sit here all day trying all these and just saying it's pretty good, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I mean, generally I like all this stuff, so I don't think anything's gonna shock me with its badness. This is just uh, one more thing I wanna try because it's texturally a little weird. Oh, it's individually wrapped. Didn't expect that, but we can well assume it's apple flavor. And uh, this has like kind of, it kind of looks like string cheese and it kind of pulls like string cheese too. But yeah, it actually feels almost exactly like string cheese, which is kind of weird considering it smells just strongly of green apple. And needless to say, it tastes strongly of green apple and it has a texture almost like string cheese, a little firmer, a little crisper, but very similar. So kind of weird, but good. Okay, so I'm not gonna try anything else for now, um, but I do want to at least look at this thing because this is sort of the treat of the whole thing. So, so like I said, this is the one where you style its hair and then cut it and there's directions on the back, which I'll show you here. That looks questionable. This whole thing looks questionable. Yeah, it's got these individually wrapped candies, which are not quite as ductile as I'd expect if I'm supposed to make hair out of these. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. We have this, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that does not look like what they think it looks like. Oh, I see. This is the thing that makes the hair. This is the squeeze through and then it becomes the head. Ah, see, so you insert this rather phallic object into this hole and from there it should create hair if we put this candy in there. Wow, that that's not easy to press down. Oh, god damn. Is that really what, just... I don't know, does it say like heat it up on here? Because this is really hard to push through this mold. I mean, geez. And since this is so much smaller than this, it just creates like a candy coating on the inside. Which you can push down, I guess. And then, okay, there we go. So there, we got this uh, head of hair, and of course we can style it with these scissors, which work quite well. And I guess uh, as you style it, the 
you eat the hair trimmings? I mean, kind of weird conceptually. So we got uh, little stickers here, or decals, I'm not sure. Oh shoot, I got a rosy cheek. There we go, I'm gonna make its eyes really spaced far apart to make it as unattractive as possible and not even properly set up for a face. And a hand nose, because everyone likes a hand nose. So, there we go. That's, uh, that's what I've created. <laughs> and because I really like the surprise element of this, I always eat the candy first and then look at the book to see what I've just eaten, rather than the other way around. I mean, you can do it however you want. So far, I've found that all the books are pretty much the same layout, and they read right to left for the authentic Japanese feel. So you got a table of contents here. Ooh, they have some kind of contest going on. Okay. There's a manga at the beginning, which is usually somehow candy related. Ah. And right down the middle, you always have the guide to everything in the box. So the corn potage puffs. Uh, corn potage is a popular creamy soup in Japan. You'll find it in restaurants and it's even sold in warm cans from vending machines. Eating these is like sipping on delicious corn potage, which uh, tastes like cream corn to me. So if you like cream corn, you'll like corn potage. Oh, the Legend of Zelda Lanyard premium crate bonus. Hey, listen, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this Legend of Zelda Lanyard with you on your adventures. Carry your keys on it, keep your ID in the badge holder, or use it to decorate your bag. I choose not to, but thank you. You know what? If anyone wants this Legend of Zelda necklace thing, leave it in the comments below and I'll randomly pick someone if there's actually any comments and uh, I'll send it to you if you live in the US. No offense to anyone else, I just don't want to get involved in shipping it internationally and dealing with customs forms and all that crap. Okay, so matcha condensed milk. A hard matcha green tea shell filled with a sweet condensed milk filling. The reminiscent of drinking a sweet creamy matcha latte. So it tastes like my favorite tea, which is green tea with matcha. And I didn't get down to the condensed milk filling because I wanted to not keep this video going forever, but I'm sure that's fine. When I said it could taste, I couldn't taste the condensed milk, well, that's why. It wasn't part of the outside coating. Genius. All right, now as for this thing, <laughs> that is the Okashina Salon DIY kit. Okashi means silly and Okashi means candy. Oh. Well, I'm assuming they're not homonyms, but are they homonyms? Did I pronounce it right? Who knows? So what do you get? A silly DIY kit that lets you style pink candy hair. What crazy styles can you come up with? Don't worry if you cut too much, each kit comes with extra candy hair. Yes, and quite fetching hair at that. <laughs> and the other thing I ate were the apple gummies. Fun individually wrapped gummies that tear into little strips. Yeah, see, they are supposed to be like string cheese in that respect. These feature a Tsugaru apple flavor. Tsugaru is a city in Amor. Oh fuck! Tsugaru is a city in Amori, famous for its apples. And beyond that, we have oh a little more about the Kit Kats. A little more about the Super Heart Chiplay. Chiplay? Okay. A uh, different kind of crate and some information about what's going on in Japan. A couple of Japanese foods, some brief learned Japanese. Oh, a little, uh, oh, details about the Salon DIY kit, which frankly you don't need. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Right, I'm very self-explanatory. You don't need diagrams to start just assemble me and put stuff in my head and squeeze it out until your arms hurt. So that's what you get in the Japan Crate. I don't know if that was too long-winded for you, but whatever, I'm doing this for my own catharsis, so there you go. So without sounding like a commercial, if you're interested in specifics, Japan Crate has three different levels of crate. They have the mini, which costs 12 bucks, weighs half a pound, and comes with five items. I guess the crib sheet here. The original is 1.5 pounds, comes with 10 items, and at least one DIY kit. And the premium kit, which is what I have, has 15 items, including a drink. Uh, it has a revolving bonus item, which in this case was this lanyard, and uh, everything else in the original kit. So you get the DIY thing as well. The premium version is 30 bucks, and the original is 25. 
So I think the premium is definitely the better deal because you're getting 150% of the stuff for only 20% more cost. All of their plans auto renew, which I'm never a fan of. Like I wish you could just buy three months of it and then have them leave you alone. Cause if you forget to cancel then you get more and I don't know, I guess that's fine for them, but it might not be great for you. Although if you sign up for the 12 month, you do get a bonus gift. I don't know what the bonus gift is, but sounds cool, I guess. Um, you don't get that steep a discount for signing up for longer periods of time. So there's really not much harm in trying this for one month at 30, at the full price of 30 bucks for this crate and uh, see if you like it. So I guess it's no secret by now, but I like this crate. I think 30 bucks is really not a bad price. It seems expensive for 15 things of candy, but realistically, if you go and try to buy this stuff from any other source in the US or any source in Japan that ships to the US, you're gonna end up spending way more for this collection than what they're charging. In fact, I looked into it because one of these crates contained potato chips that I really, really liked. They were seaweed and salt flavor, and to me, they tasted of truffles even though it was weird because they had no truffles in them. They weren't even supposed to be flavored like truffles artificially, but I love truffles and they were awesome. However, the cheapest price I could find was like six bucks for a small bag, I don't know, about this size. And that didn't even include shipping. So it's crazy. My favorite part about the Japan crate, and in fact, any crate in general is the surprise factor. I like a surprise because, you know, life gets so dull, so, it's very exciting when you have a whole bunch of new crap to try out. And I mean, 15 items, it's a lot of stuff to try, so it keeps you interested, keeps you busy for a reasonable amount of time. I'd definitely recommend this as a gift for anyone you know that's into all things Japanese or even just all snacks in general. Now, I'm not getting paid for any of this. Uh, I could give a crap if Japan Crate goes out of business. Uh, no one's really gonna see this review anyway because nobody watches my reviews. So take it for what it's worth. But I honestly do like this and I honestly am excited about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Scott and I'm still Scott and I guess I always will be Scott until I die. That's a depressing way to end a video. But if you liked the video except for the end, subscribe, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Uh, you know, whatever you feel. Um, yeah, check me out on Facebook and Twitter if you like that kind of stuff. And until next time, keep fucking that chicken. I'm not really good at conclusions. I don't know what to say.